Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Okay, now that that's my girl. I love me some Gloria. Like you guys know, you know, we follow each other on social media. I had shouted her out, you know, because she I know she had wanted to get into podcasting. And so when I seen her, you know, podcasting on Vlad TV and she did the interview with Cisco, I was really proud of her because I knew that was something she wanted to do. So, you know, I showed her love, you know what I mean? And uh, raggedy ass Vlad got in his feelings, you know what I'm saying? For some reason, he doesn't like me, not that I give two fucks, you know what I'm saying? I don't know that man from a can of paint. But he ended up flagging my page for copyright on some spiteful shit. So that's how my Instagram page got took. But now Gloria is not even on Vlad TV anymore. She has left. And so, which I think it's a good look for her. I think it's weird for her to be on Vlad TV, knowing that her baby daddy was on Vlad TV blasting her years ago. But anyhow, so um, Gloria had took to social media and she was talking about how she felt like she was being groomed in the industry because a lot of people don't know that gloria velez has been in the industry literally since i think she was like 15 16. you know she was dancing in music videos um a lot of us knew her before we knew her name you would just see her you know and so she was blasting um uncle luke okay so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this back and forth um with her and uncle luke because she i believe she grew up in miami and so she was one of Uncle Luke's dancers and all that stuff. So let me go ahead and share my screen with y'all here. All right. So that is good old Uncle Luke, Luther Campbell and Gloria. So Gloria took the social media. Um, she says, if you don't think grooming is happening in this business, you're sadly mistaken. It started in 1994 with Luke and a few others in this business, I was in high school. So she posted her picture. You guys can see the picture of her in high school here. And so um, Uncle Luke, you know, he caught wind of it. He was not happy about this at all. Let me see if I can find his tweet. No, I can't. I'm seeing stuff about Derek Chauvin. Let me see if I can find, is this it? Nope, it's not, okay. So anyways, he ended up like commenting on the post and was saying, you know, he didn't even know what grooming was, you know, what the hell is she talking about? So then he decided to go live, okay? And this is what he said. So he says, no, 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 Luke, don't get down like that. Keep your, com keep your, com keep your convention, I think he means conversation, on you and your baby daddy before you get a defamation lawsuit. So that is what he said to her. We're going to go ahead and listen to Uncle Luke now. Learn what the f grooming mean. I don't even know what the f grooming mean. Grooming. F fuck is grooming. They had to explain that f to me. Y'all got the right one. I don't have no problem going to court. I'm not Russell Simmons. I'm not them other people. I don't do that. I'm very, I know my brand. My brand is Luke. Hey, we want some pussy. Face down, up, that's what like me so horny. The problem is when you know your brand and you know what you're, when you know what you're singing about, you subject yourself to be in that kind of trap faster. So what you have to do is really not be about what those songs is talking about because you can get yourself jammed up. I video everything. I video everything. Everybody sign releases. I do shows. Ain't no underage people be doing no show with me. I fire girls. You get caught. Uh, oh, she was, I have. Chaperone for the girls, a one head dancer. It's always one head dancer. And she put everybody in check. 
So if you're doing, I'm not, this is not a traveling whorehouse. So you going to mess around with these other artists, you're going to get sent home, sweetheart. You get fired. All right. So yeah, I just heard what Uncle Luke had to say. Um, and then she posted pictures of her, like when she was younger with her baby. She had her baby at 16 by Aaron Hall. We all know that. And you can clearly tell, like, she was young here. And we talked about this in the last stream. Now, I will say this. Um, I have my own Luther Campbell experience. I'll talk about it one day. Um, I don't know if I'm going to talk about it on live. But I will say this. From me meeting him, like, I've met Uncle Luke. I've hung with him. I see all the babies in the chat talking about who the hell is this. That is Luther Campbell. I want to rock right now. I, yeah, that, that's him. What was that? Doodle Brown. Yeah. So I've had my own experience with him. And I will tell you, like, it was a positive experience for me. You know what I'm saying? And we really just, like, this was at the club in Miami. No, actually, it was West Palm Beach. It was West Palm Beach. This was years ago. I was probably, like, 21. I had just turned 21. So, you know, I have my own little Luther Campbell story, but it's nothing bad. It's nothing salacious. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing like that. I was very surprised at how he got down. You know what I'm saying? When I met him. So a lot of the stuff that he's staying in that stream. Yeah, he he runs a tight ship. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not, you know, it was a like, who's Uncle Luke? <laughs> Y'all are some babies. It's all good. But yeah, no, he runs a pretty tight ship. Um, nothing but a, a good experience with him on my part. But again, that doesn't negate if other people have had, you know what I'm saying, unpleasant experiences. I don't know. But he is right. When you are making that type of music and it's all about freaking and fucking, you got to protect yourself. You know, so I hope that, you know, he has all the video and the, you know, NDAs and the, you know, photo releases that he says he has. Because you do got to protect yourself in these situations. Because um, 2 Live Crew was definitely off the chain. You know, I was a baby back then, so I don't know a lot of the music. I know a little bit. But I remember, like, he was fighting um, the government to be able to like, you know, freedom of speech because uh, Tipper Gore, Al Gore's wife, that's why they have the parental advisory sticker on um, music, like on CDs. Well, hell, there's not even no more physical CDs and cassettes nowadays. Everything is streaming. But back in the day, if you go back and you look at older CDs and cassettes, it had the sticker parental advisory that be that came because of the Luke Campbell situation when he sued, you know, the government, you know, for trying to take out his freedom of speech. So, yeah, he definitely, if it wasn't for him, hip hop would not be what it is today. He definitely fought and he won, you know, so he did a lot of the unprecedented, unprecedented things for hip hop. So, you know, him and Gloria, they had the back and forth. But with that being said, though, Gloria has definitely been through a lot in the industry, you know, and even like for me talking to her, like I told her, like, even when I was younger, you know, we used to look at them like they they were goals to us, you know, when we were like 16, 17, 18, right? Because everything looked so glamorous back then. You know, this was the era of the video vixens and these girls were so pretty. And remember I told y'all when you saw people on television, you automatically assumed that they were rich because everybody didn't make it on television, right? It's not like today where everything is so oversaturated. So if you were in a video, we automatically thought like, oh my gosh, they're so rich and they're lucky. They're with our favorite rappers, they're dancing. Like, oh my gosh, I wanna be a video model too, you know? So a lot of girls looked up to that. And um, just like the y'all's generation be looking up to Instagram girls. It's the same thing. People can try and act like, oh, you know, this isn't this didn't exist back in the 90s and the early 2000s. That's a lie. You know what I'm saying? It was sold to us as a glamorous package. You know what I mean? Everybody wanted to be in the big pimping video. Like it just looks so cool. They're at Carnival and they're all these beautiful women, you know? And um what I'm finding out now is that I thank God. Because again, everything is just a decision, right? You can make one split decision. It can take your life down this way or down this path. You know what I mean? And, and I thank God that that wasn't my story. But that doesn't mean that these other women don't have a story to tell. That doesn't mean that they weren't abused and groomed and mistreated by men in the industry. Because again, 
Unfortunately, hip hop is a very exploitive industry where they exploit women and treat women like commodities. Is this every hip hop rapper? Of course not. You know what I'm saying? But as we're finding out more and more with Diddy, the rabbit hole goes deep. And I, I, that's, what, that's what irritated me with the whole R. Kelly thing. When I was talking about the whole R. Kelly situation years ago, R. Kelly is a horrible person. He did a lot of messed up stuff, but he was not the only one. This is this was just the norm in the industry back then. You know what I mean? It was a lot of people. That's why you don't hear these men speaking up. Everybody's saying, well, you know, why is nobody speaking up for Diddy? You know, everybody's quiet. Why is nobody speaking up for R. Kelly? Because they all have skeletons in their closet too. Duh. Why would Jay-Z speak up? Remember when everything was going on with R. Kelly, remember Nick Cannon was writing apology letters, you know, for doing the gigolo video with R. Kelly. And if he, you know, if he mishandled anybody, he's apologizing now. Remember Russell Simmons was writing these, you know, long ass dissertations and then he ran to Bali. This was the culture back then in hip hop. And we were kids, you know, we were kids back then. We didn't understand it. But now when you're older and you look back on it, it's like, no, it was very exploitative. And when you find out that, you know, everybody in the industry made money and generational wealth off of these girls, off of these video vixens. But when you go back and you look at these same video vixens in 2023, they're not living that trife life. You know, some of them are doing okay. Like I know Buffy the Body, she ended up starting her own little, you know, fitness thing. I interviewed her years ago. Um, she was one of the first interviews I ever did. Um, but like Esther Baxter, who's the one that turned into a crackhead that people keep laughing at? She was a badass video vixen. I can't think of her name, but she's on the streets like in New York, like cracked out. You know what I'm saying? Like Melissa Ford is still doing good. She's doing stuff with Joe Budden and things like that. But a lot of them have nothing to show for it. They were just used. And then it got so bad that after a while, they don't even have to pay girls anymore. Because you had the super heads and you had the other girls who cheapened the industry. Whereas when Gloria and all them were like the main video vixens, they were making thousands of dollars, right? So by the time it got to the next generation of video vixens, they were willing to bust it open for free on BET Uncut. So it wasn't even worth it after a while. And then now you have Instagram. And yeah, you have girls, you know, who make money, you know, who do escorting and all that stuff. But you still have a segment of girls who are willing to bust it open on Instagram for nothing more than likes. Likes and hearts are the new form of currency on social media, unfortunately. So it's a very, no, not Mahia Campbell. Mahia Campbell was never a video vixen. She was in some videos, but she was an actress. Um, no, this is a Spanish girl. I can't think of her name. I'm trying to see somebody wrote it. Now it was a Spanish girl from like the 2000s. It wasn't Mahia though. Uh-uh. She was solely a video vixen. It was, y'all know damn well it wasn't Erica Mena. Erica Mena, was, well, she was on Love and Hip Hop. It was some, y'all can, y'all gotta look it up. But like, yeah, she's like doing really bad now. And every now and then um, they'll post her like on well, somebody's blog, you know, but I can't think of her name. Somebody's, was it maybe, was it Vita? Maybe Vita or Susie Perez. I know it's a Latina. Maybe it is Vita. Let me Google. It might be. <laughs> Let me put in Vita, Vita Guerrera crackhead. And see that comes up. Because all they shown is her, like her old pretty pictures. Nah, it's not her. Yeah, no crackhead pictures are attached to her name. It's somebody else. It's some other Spanish girl. But like I said, a lot of these girls were definitely exploited, unfortunately. And so I get Gloria for wanting to tell her story. If you're dancing for grown men and you're in music videos and you're underage, there's definitely a grooming aspect. Let's keep it real. Look at her baby's father. You know what I'm saying? And the things that he was saying that we talked about in the last live stream was just simply shocking. So, um, oh, they said Cubana Lust. Is that who that is? Maybe it was Cubana. Let me look. I know it was one of them. Let's, let's look. I think I might have... Hit the right one on, on the head. Yes. Yes. Cubana Lust. Let me share my screen. That is her. Give me just a second here. Let me share this. Oh, she looks bad. That's so sad. There. Yep, that's her. She was a baddie. This was her before. 
after. So a lot of people were really shocked because she was so pretty. She'd be like on World Star Hip Hop, King Magazine. So, and then she kept getting arrested. Yeah, that's sad. You know, so a lot of people get used in this industry. They get eaten up and spit out, unfortunately. And like I told you guys, we are now living in the age of Aquarius. So a lot of things are coming to the forefront. Um, a lot of things, you know, a lot of people already tell their story and understand the economy is bad, y'all. People are struggling. And so it's one thing to work a nine to five and you quit your job, you move on with your life. But imagine being 18, 19 years old and you're in all these music videos, you're in, you know, shake your ass, watch yourself, shake your ass, show me what you're working with. Think about all the girls who were in all these videos when we were growing up in the 90s, in the late 90s, in the 2000s, you know what I'm saying? Thong song, just all the chicks, right? And these videos are forever in rotation on YouTube, right? We How many times we go back and watch these videos and reminisce um, the songs? Are playing all the time on the radio, you know, nostalgia, and you're just a video vixen. You, you, they get no residuals from that shit. They get no money from that. You know, you got paid your little five hundred to a thousand dollars, and maybe five thousand for that day, and then it's a wrap. You know, so I think you're gonna have a lot of people who are coming out now. They're feeling away because these artists are still eating. The record labels are still eating, and they get nothing from that. So they're gonna be coming out telling their stories more and more. Just watch, it's crazy. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.